they still remember it so well they can almost smell the mint in the wind, feel the touch of the olive branches. Moments relegated to memories. Life now for the Farwan family of Syria is a world away in a place they didn't even know existed until they got on a plane for Canada as refugees. Lethbridge, Alberta. Only a few months after arriving, there are daily discoveries. Most about the meaning of finally being safe, of finally building a home. A place for the eight Farwan kids. Mohammed Eid. Mahmoud. Jabril. Yamama. Ahmed. Tiny Kowther. And the wildly energetic Nua and Adam. To get all of them safely out of Syria, safely to Canada, was the idea and hard work of their parents, Halil and Huda. Everything they've sacrificed has been for their kids. Their first few days in Lethbridge meant calling a motel home. But it really didn't take long before word came that a house was waiting. A family on the run for three years unpacking again, hopefully for the last time. Moving in is hardly a simple affair with eight kids. Neither is the prospect of keeping that new fridge stocked. That's a worry for later. For now, what matters is there is a place for all. That's new and so welcome. The far ones have a caseworker and part of that complicated enough job is running through the not so basic basics. It can be a lot to take in. It's going to be your responsibility to make sure that your sidewalk is clear. Cross, chuck it over to the yeah, and you just kind of sprinkle it a little bit. You don't need a lot. When it's time to take out the garbage, it has to go all the way off of the sidewalk. There are some simple pleasures, just the beginning of those. We gave the Far Ones a camera for those first few weeks to record what struck them most. This is one of the first scenes on the tape. Halil had awoken to the sound of these visitors under his bedroom window and got the kids up. Curiously, a moment he says when he knew his family would be okay. <laughs> وفكرت إنه الغزال عنده يعني بقدر يعيش بأمان بالمنطقة هاي حتى لو إنه ضعيف بس بقدر يعيش فكرنا بالأمان أمان طبعا بالأمان الأمان هو البيت البني آدم السكون الهدوء It 
It's now a few months later. All the kids are in school, and the hard work of building a new life sets in. Years in limbo and sometimes on the run means this family hasn't had much of a routine. Halil wants to change that, starting with a lunch-making lineup orderly enough to put a military to shame. The pressure to keep up is real. Out the door, off to the bus. Do they have passes? Everyone know where to go? Khalil in charge of it all. And smoking a lot more than he has in a while. That is the stress behind the smile. He takes the young ones to elementary school, not far from home. Huda gets the older kids downtown to high school, then Kauther off to daycare. Finally, she meets Halil for their own English class. Okay. Here's another Halil-inspired ritual. Please stand up. Once he realized how his kids start their day at school, Halil insisted his own English classes begin every morning with the anthem. It's a work in progress. in on each of the kids in their classrooms. Jabril is young enough that the learning should come easily. He's just got to get past his shyness first. There are moments when language doesn't entirely matter. The athletic abilities of young Nuh earns him fast friends. Adam is struggling. Okay. A. Q. But his teachers see what's happening and want to prop up his self-esteem. Adam. Realize there's much he can teach his class. What's one? Wahad. 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 Snin. Snin. Tala. Tucked away in daycare, Cowther is amazingly quick to adjust. Oblivious, calm, safe. She is perhaps the luckiest one. The older kids are in a lonely limbo. Heads filled with memories sweet and sorrowful that they want to share with those around them, but don't yet know how. We're all practicing English, right? It's okay if we make some mistakes in English. We just try our best, okay? They will stay in English classes until they've learned enough to pick up the regular high school curriculum. The teachers don't stop trying to draw them out. Pick a tree, pick a flower, tell us about it. That's the class assignment. Olive trees? Do you know where olive trees grow? Almost all the far one kids reach into their past, their olive trees. There we go. They can't put off thinking about their futures, though. Ahmed, the oldest, should be out of school next year, but then what? Yeah, there we go. He wants a good job, a solid future, but English will still be a challenge. Is this your He seems determined to avoid life on the margins, which is a threat for so many refugees. Is that yours, What do you want to do? You're in school, you're learning English. What do you want to do next year? Halil 
كان ميولي يعني إذا engineer أو or doctor. Engineer or doctor. Wow. Your father and your mother did a big thing getting you here. What did your parents give up to let you come here? To get you here? خلوا عن ذكريات أكيد يعني. يعني نحن أخواتي الصغار خاصة يعني إنه لغتهم مش كثير يعني بس أبوي وأمي تخلوا يعني عن اللغة الأصلية لغة الأم تخلوا عنها ويجوا هون تعلموا يعني اللغة الإنجليزية. يعني طبعا هو مش راح يقصر معنا ولا هو مقصر معنا وطبعا احنا بنحبه كثير لانه دائما معنا ونقدم له الشكر انه دائما معنا بقدم له مساعدات ونصائح و جس يماما's worry was always about fitting in in Canada leaving her close friends behind, standing out for wearing her headscarf. But in that enviably easy way of the young, she's okay. At least she's getting there. You have uh, one very good friend. I have a very pretty picture. Helway. <laughs> You're both beautiful. Tell me about her. هاي صديقتي أسماء تقريبا أيام الطفولة نحن أنا وياها يعني تقريبا زي زي اللي عشنا مع بعض هيك شيء. If you could talk to her now, what would you tell her? استأثر لها. And then of course Halil and Huda. Both so outwardly enthusiastic, but also sometimes admitting to a fatigue they've never quite known before. Toronto Legislative. The strain of learning English after a lifetime of Arabic. How, how is English class for you? Uh, very good, very good. Uh, I can speak English now. Uh, Come uh, the Canada, no, uh, speak English. Uh, now speak English, English little. little. <laughs> what about you, Huda? No, same, yeah, same, 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 yeah. yeah, same, 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 same. And Huda and Salah together. Is that okay? Halil's plan is for the whole family to be okay. fluent in English in a year. Okay. It's smart, ambitious, but so hard. Canadian. The reality of what they're taking on is just sinking in even if they hesitate to acknowledge it open. Uh, capital city, uh, yellow knife. And this is a precarious time for them. Those here in Lethbridge who've worked with refugees see a pattern, an initial eagerness to be better than good, always on, always grateful, and then crushing exhaustion. Is it any wonder why? Yes, when we come back, slowly, slowly, they build this new life in Canada. But what happens at the other end of the phone line gets hard to take. The camera in the family's hands again for a surprise night out. The Lethbridge University hockey team invited groups of Syrian refugees to take in a game. They are all, all in, and all invited to the dressing room. Forget any notion of being shy, the Farwans and their new Syrian friends putting on their own show after the game. <laughs> Feeling like they belong, are actually finally at home, takes time and there are setbacks. One slow, sleepy morning, Huda makes a regular check-in with her mother back in Jordan. 
This sort of call, she says, is always a bit of a performance. Huda and her mother trying so hard to keep the veneer of happiness intact. They all are. And here it is, after months of watching Halil be so purposely positive for his family, he can't keep it up. It has to be harder than anyone can really grasp. Just a glimpse of the real burden here. That's all anyone will get. Inshallah, inshallah. Long faces gone the moment Cowther pads into the room. These parents are playing the role of their lifetime for their kids, that everything will be just fine until it actually is. When do you think you'll be able to be with them or see them again? Everything now riding on making it work in this place that months ago they'd never even heard of. It is one thing to flee for your life, it is something else entirely to learn how to live again. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Blackburn.